Hey guys, it's Steve with Prima Coffee. Today we're gonna take a look at the Nitro Press and we're gonna make a few different drink recipes with it to kind of show you what it's like and how to make use of this guy. Um, if you're not familiar, the Nitro Press is a really cool thing where basically they've converted a pretty standard whipped cream siphon into a device that allows you to make like actually real nitro coffee in small batches. So you don't have to buy a whole kegerator, you don't have to buy gas bottles or anything like that. You can get a pretty small 500 milliliter siphon with a special dispensing tip and charge it up with nitrogen gas and you get really good results. Um, we've been playing with this guy for a few months now. Um, it's a lot of fun, it has really great results like I said, but we also sent it out to a few different people to help us kind of come up with some recipes to play with it. Um, so we have three different recipes today that I'm going to show you um, thanks to three really awesome folks from the coffee community, um, Adam Jackson Bay, Eric Avoni, and Brian Bikey. Um, and the first one I'm going to make is called the Cascara Soda by Adam Jackson Bay. So I'm going to get right into that. I just pulled a shot of espresso, I'm going to dump it straight onto some ice here. Uh, our next ingredient that we have is a cascara syrup. So cascara is the kind of like dried fruit of the coffee berry, uh, and you can brew it kind of like a tea. And in this case, I added a bit of sugar, and I'm going to, uh, to, to turn it into a syrup basically, and I'm gonna add that as my flavoring here. So I just got 19 grams of that, uh, in addition to my uh, double shot of espresso, plus 200 grams of just plain cold water. Really easy. This is just kind of dilute it um, and a little bit of flavor. And now I'm going to add just a few dashes of a citric acid solution. Adam's recipe actually calls for phosphate, which is kind of like an old school uh, acidic component that you would see added to like soda at, you know, like a soda uh, fountain. Um, it's a little bit harder to find, so we asked him about some substitutions. Citric acid should be okay, it's not the same flavor. Um, but even something like lime or lemon juice would be okay too. It's just a phosphate is a fairly plain acidic flavor that doesn't have uh, much else going on. So it's nice to add to a drink just for a little bit of, again, just for some acidity um, that doesn't carry any flavor of its own. Um, now I'm going to load that all up into the nitro press. Uh, I'm going to double strain it. That's kind of just the best practice so you don't get anything clogging. Um, a shot of espresso shouldn't really have anything in terms of coffee grounds, um, but it's just a good kind of precautionary measure to strain through a, a fine sieve like I have here. Uh, next, I'm just going to seal up the siphon. Um, so again, this has a 500 milliliter capacity. You don't really want to overfill it. You can underfill it and you can still, you know, use it um, as normal and still get good results. Um, and then I'm going to charge it up with one of these. This is just one nitrogen gas canister. Um, so to do that, I'm going to turn the thing upside down and just twist. You can hear the gas go into solution. And then finally, all I have to do is shake it for a couple minutes. Adam's recipe has you um, shake it and chill it for a little bit. Um, so for best results, you probably want to shake a little bit, chill it, and then shake it just a little bit more right before you serve. But if you just want to shake as I'm doing for 30 seconds to a minute, you can still get a pretty good head out of it. Um, again, so the Nitro Press has this specially designed dispensing tip, which acts a lot, a lot like a stout faucet. So as you'll see, when I dispense this, it'll be a very cloudy liquid. Um, and all that cloudiness is the nitrogen bubbles coming out of solution. So just like a uh, Guinness or any other kind of like nitro stout beer that you might get at a bar, um, this is the same operating principle where you have nitrogen gas coming out of solution and it's going through a specialized tip to break up the bubbles a little bit more and get a very creamy sort of head going. So this is a fantastic drink. It's uh, espresso based, a little bit of water to dilute it, and then that cascara syrup really adds this kind of depth and dimensionality to it where it has kind of a raisiny flavor, a little bit of sweetness on its own. And then of course that citric acid adds a lot of nice acidity. So it's really fragrant, it's light, it's refreshing, it's a really awesome summertime drink. And it has this really beautiful head and kind of creamy body to it thanks to the Nitro Press. Uh, next up, we're going to be doing a recipe from By uh, Brian Bikey that incorporates bourbon cream, a little bit of cold brew and some other stuff for fun. All right, so Brian's drink is called Worlds Collide. Uh, it's basically kind of a combination of his big hobbies, coffee, chocolate, bourbon. What a nice life, huh? Um, 
it's pretty simple to start out, but it gets a little bit fancier as we start to actually put it in a cup and garnish it and stuff. But um, we're gonna start off with four ounces of cold brew concentrate, just pouring in a mixing glass over ice. Uh, we're gonna do two ounces of bourbon cream. Uh, you could use an Irish cream or something like that if you like. Uh, but here in Kentucky, we go for bourbon. So add that. And then just for a little tiny bit of sweetness, we're just gonna give about five milliliters of simple syrup. That's just plain sugar, water, mix it about two to one ratio, um, heat it up just so everything dissolves and then cool it and use it. Um, so we're just stirring to chill and dilute just a little bit. Uh, we don't want a ton of dilution here. This is gonna be kind of a rich, flavorful, kind of ice cream textured drink. All right, that's probably about enough. Into our nitro press. Just as before, we're gonna double strain. Again, just to kind of make sure that if there's any like little ice chunks or something like that, we don't want it to clog the, the nozzle, the siphon, or any coffee grounds or anything like that. It can be kind of hard to clean out. So we just wanna double strain it, make sure that it's uh, nice and well filtered um, just for better dispensing. And then the last step is we're gonna grab our gas cartridge and charge it up. So just as before, tip the whole nitro press upside down, screw it in, you'll hear it kind of fill in and then we'll give it a shake. Uh, I'm gonna shake this for about 30 seconds uh, and then I'm actually gonna set it aside for a moment while I prep my glass. So the garnish on this drink, it sort of sounds complicated at first, but basically it's gonna maximize kind of some of the aromatic uh, components of the beverage. Um, you have this like creamy richness from the bourbon cream, a little bit of alcohol in there, plus the cold brew coffee. So you have really good flavor going on, but uh, it could use a little bit of a boost, especially since it's cold, it could use a little bit of a boost in terms of aromatics. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna give it an absinthe rinse in our coupe. Uh, this is a seven, a seven ounce coupe. Um, and I just have this little atomizer, it makes it easier. You could just pour like a little drop in here and kind of rinse it around the glass. Um, but uh, this is just to give it a little bit of kind of a fresh aroma. Uh, absinthe tends to have a kind of licorice-y kind of aroma. Um, so this isn't really enough to kind of make it taste like licorice. It's just enough to kind of give you a little bit of a, uh, that smell of kind of candy licorice flavor. Uh, I'm gonna give this guy another little bit of a shake and we're about ready to dispense. Just as before, stick the spout straight up and down, just give the handle a squeeze, and then you'll see your lovely little beverage start to flow. The one thing that we are gonna do with this drink is because we're gonna garnish the top, we're gonna wait just a few seconds for the foam to kind of settle out on top. You can see it's gonna to start to get a little bit lighter in color. So the first thing that we're gonna do is just put a little drop of vanilla extract into the middle of the cup. And I'm just gonna do that by pouring some into the lid and then dropping it straight in the middle. The next thing we're gonna do is give it a little bit of a nutmeg and cinnamon, um, the, like a sprinkle on top. So this is just my nutmeg right now. Not too much, it's really just there for aroma and nutmeg can have kind of a pungency to it so we don't wanna go overboard. And then next, just a little tap of cinnamon. And I'm kind of sticking to one side just kind of for artistic reasons, not such a big deal. And finally, a brine bikey beverage wouldn't be complete without some freshly ground dark chocolate on top. You can use chocolate of your choice. You don't have to have expensive tastes, but a good chocolate is good because it's, you know, it's gonna have a good flavor overall to it. And there's our drink. That is uh, World's Collide. Um, again, it's a really creamy kind of rich beverage. It's reminiscent of like, um, maybe even like a bourbon milkshake or uh, like a, like a rum or bourbon ice cream or something like that. It has that rich creamy flavor, good sweetness, a little bit of coffee to kind of round things out so it's not too sweet. Um, and then of course the, the garnish that we put on top, all those aromatics coming together really makes it complex and enjoyable. It's much more than just this sweet bourbon coffee thing. Uh, really, really delicious. 
Our final drink coming up comes from Erica Voni. Uh, it's a really fun like cereal milk ice latte uh, made with cinnamon toast crunch cereal. Super delicious, really easy to make. So this uh, cinnamon toast crunch ice latte, um, it's it's kind of a riff on, there's this kind of trend that's been going on for a while in coffee where you use cereal milk in lattes. It's fun, it's nostalgic. Um, it's a really fun way, especially to dress up in uh, like a flavored latte, just because, you know, why not make it taste like Lucky Charms or something, right? Um, so what we have here to start is just about eh, maybe three quarters of a cup of cinnamon toast crunch. It's been steeping in milk for about 20 minutes now. Um, so we are ready to strain it and throw it right into the nitro press. Um, this recipe is really, really simple. Uh, it's all about the cereal milk. That's where the, the main flavor comes from. And then we're adding a lot of texture by um, dispensing it with the nitrogen. So we've got cold milk. We're gonna add some cold brew a little bit later. Um, and of course, lots of sugary cinnamon flavor from that cereal. Um, the really cool thing about cereal milk, of course, is that it doesn't just taste like cinnamon sugar in this case, it tastes like cinnamon sugar cereal. So it's a little bit different than just making a cinnamon flavored sweet latte. Um, so again, it's a, it's a really unique kind of approach to a flavored latte um, and super, super tasty and you know reminiscent of everybody's childhood. Um, so again, just as usual, we're gonna throw our uh, liquid into the nitro press, seal it up, charge it up, and then give it a shake. Um, you'll notice I didn't add any coffee to the siphon itself. Um, you probably could. Erica's recipe just says add the um, cold brew to the glass that you're serving in, which works just fine because as you dispense, it mixes really, really thoroughly anyway. Um, also, we've noticed that sometimes with like cold brew or espresso, because it's, uh, especially if you're using a concentrated cold brew, um, that the strength um, can kind of inhibit the, the head, it can kind of break it down a little bit. So this is probably a pretty smart move on Erica's part. Uh, now we're just gonna add a few ounces of cold brew to our glass. Uh, really simple. Give this guy just another quick shake. Milk seems to actually foam pretty well with the nitro press. Um, it's not quite uh, like whipped cream or anything, but you get a really nice texture in the head. And we're just gonna dispense straight into the glass. Just as before, um, once you let this drink kind of settle out, um, you'll notice that the head gets richer and thicker toward the top. Um, right now, it's all these bubbles are really well mixed in the glass. So you'll notice that you start to see this layer of head kind of get thicker and thicker as you let this, the drink settle. Uh, really just like a, a Guinness or a Nitro Stout, what have you. Um, now, Erica describes this drink as basically a liquid milkshake and I couldn't agree more. <laughs> um, I imagine that if you had like a chocolatey cereal, it would taste just like a chocolate milkshake. Just a little bit more liquidy, not quite as cold, but still just as fun and refreshing and sweet as, uh, as a milkshake would be in summer. So really, really lovely, you know, simple, again, really easy to assemble, uh, delicious cold coffee drink for the summer. So again, the Nitro Press is a ton of fun. There's a lot of versatility that you have with it. Um, you can use it for coffee, for tea, for cocktails, um, basically lots of different cold beverages. If you want to add that Nitro texture, you can, and it's really simple and it's really easy. And you, again, you don't have to uh, invest in that big kegerator setup. You don't have to commit to the space or the kegs or all the equipment and all that stuff. This is a small item. It can fit in your drawer in your kitchen. Um, really, really easy to use. So we actually have more recipes that you didn't see here. Um, you can check them out on our blog at primacoffee.com. And of course, if you'd like to take a look at the Nitro Press and grab one for yourself, head on over to Prima Coffee and check it out there. Thanks for watching.